Motorstorm is a series that I really, really love. I did a video on Pacific Rift, I want to say, like, two months ago, give or take. But I really love the Motorstorm series, and I kind of want to do a video on pretty much all of them. Because there's five of them. Uh, you got Motorstorm, the original. You got Pacific Rift, which is really good. Uh, Arctic Edge, which was a PS2 and PSP release. Uh, this is Apocalypse, the last, like, really main Motorstorm game, and then they released one on Vita, and, like, as a little PSN game, called RC, which we won't even talk about. That one's, uh, let's just pretend that one never happened. It was, like, a little top-down isometric racer. Wait, what game? Um, but this is Apocalypse, which I would consider to be the last real Motorstorm game. And this one's really cool, and the problem it has is, where do you go from this game? Because this game actually has a little bit of a story going. There's actually three separate campaigns. Um, through these uh, lovely fellas right here. The Rookie the Pro vet Veteran campaign. Uh, basically the game's about more or less the world's ending. Earthquakes happening. Natural disasters. And as the world kind of goes into its final days of chaos. People decide to hold racing competitions. Through the falling apart streets and through the buildings and stuff. And we're going to kind of look at that. We're just going to do some races on uh, the quick play mode. And just uh, see where life takes us here. I'll be a rally car for this, because why not? I actually barely did quick play. I only really did the campaign in this, but I really liked it. And there's like a good amount of tracks here, too. Um, yeah, Motorstorm's a really, really awesome, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome game. Let's play on a... Uh... Ooh, I know. I know which one I want to do. I need to find... When I see it, I'll know it. Waves of Mutilation. There we go. That's the one. It's a nice little three lap. And it's just a racing game. And if you've seen Motorstorm before, you have a little boost. And outside of that, it's just like big off-road racing. I'm not sure like how this one was received when it came out. But I really, really dug it. Actually, I only just very recently played through it. Like, like, I want to say, like, in the last year I played this one. Yeah, last year I played this one. Uh, because I never got around to it until then. And then, now I'm like, this might be the best one in the series, possibly. I don't know if this one really gets a lot of love or not. But I love the fact that this game has a lot of transforming stages. And because they just said, you know what? We're gonna go kind of screwy with the Motorstorm concept and do this, like, end of the world shit. It got cool. It got really, really, really cool. And I was into it. Like, straight up just into it. So a lot of the stages have uh, weather effects, and the stages kind of transform as you go through it. And it leads to some uh, some really cool little shenanigans. And really cool, uh, just, just excellent track design, I'd say. It's not like your typical Motorstorm, because Motorstorm's mainly just been about like those off-road tracks, right? Just off-road, very basic courses. Good courses. But, you know, nothing, like, mind-blowing. I done goofed. Um, but this game, you know, it just, I mean, just look at it. <laughs> I don't think I'm really gonna go beyond saying that, just, I mean, look at it. And, yeah, I just think Apocalypse was such a fun, fun game. And it was probably one of the bigger shocks to me, because I never heard much about Apocalypse. Uh, but I decided to buy it anyways and give it a go, and here I am, and now it might be my favorite racer on the PS3? Possibly, although I haven't played a ton of the racing games on the PS3, I'm kind of working through them now. Because my big project this year has been playing through as many PS3 games as I can. Because I kind of skipped out on most of the console's life, uh, life cycle. Most of it. I mean, I played some occasional games on it here and there. But, uh, I think I maybe did, like, ten games on PS3 throughout its life. Uh, up until this year, and I've done about, like, 30 or 40 more since, like, uh, 2019 started. So I've been going through it at a very, very nice rapid pace. And yeah, just, uh, this game sticks out to me. Because A, it's gorgeous. Uh, B, the frame rate's, like, for what it is, it's kind of rock solid. Like, it doesn't really dip all too much. Especially, like, with all the chaos happening on screen, it's not bad. Uh, C, the campaign was pretty cool. It does, like, this motion comic book sort of thing. Where you get to, like, learn, like, all the characters. And, like, what their motivations are. And what's happening. And, like, you just kind of grow to know them. 
over the course of each campaign, which is like an hour and a half, two hours long, like nothing crazy. And yeah, it's super interesting. And if you're like into like more traditional racing and you're not like into the transforming stages, like there are stages that don't like really transform. They all have like, you know, the apocalyptic sort of thing going for them. But you do have like your ones that aren't completely transforming on you like every ma uh, every lap. In fact, I remember this one like transforming a bit more than this, but I could be crazy. It it could also be because I put on. Never mind. <laughs> As I was saying, yeah, this track definitely transforms a bit. A good little bit. I was gonna kind of get my uh, my driving in check here. That tree is not my friend. But yeah, I just think this is a very respectable racing game. It's tough for me to like really find faults with it. I was I was hooked through it like all the way through. Also made for like some very fun streams for me. Because I think I streamed through it over the course of two or three nights. And I was kind of in awe at just how much I enjoyed it. Alright, got some low visibility, but we're good. So, a thing I love about MotorStorm is just how the game itself handles, because it is very arcadey. But the cars feel weighty. Like, the initial turn on them feels very weighty, but like once you kind of like lean into that turn, it definitely picks up into more of like an arcadey feel. Like, you just kind of drift around. But you get to have that very, like, nice, just, initial turn. And if you really want to hammer it on and drift, you totally can. Nice Ferris wheel. So I always found the turning in Motorstorm to be good. I love the boost mechanics. I've barely been doing it this game, either. I don't know why. Let's fix, let's fix that. Let's remedy that. I've been going very slow. This is, like, the slowest Motorstorm gameplay. I almost went right into the fire. That's why I was going slow. I just, I love the feel of Motorstorm, and I don't know, just, uh, Apocalypse does it for me. And I think the reason why Apocalypse probably does it for me uh, so, so much right now, or just in general, not just right now, but in general, is because after playing Arctic Edge and Pacific Rift and, like, you know, the normal one, like, sure, like, the settings are a little bit different and whatnot, and, you know, like, one's kind of ice-themed, other ones have, like, very, like, fire-heavy tracks, like, wind-water-heavy tracks, things like that, uh, and Pacific Rift. But Apocalypse really just... I think I just went off the stage for some reason, I don't know why. Um, I think I did. I kind of derped thinking about what I was saying. But yeah, I like Apocalypse because it just went with a completely different idea using the same core gameplay. And it felt like a real evolution of the series. But again, like, where do you go from here? Because once you're at Apocalypse, like, you can't really... Anything else is going to be, like, going back in time. It's going to be going back to a very, like, standard sort of thing. So I feel like Apocalypse... Mm, I don't want to say, like... It didn't screw the series. Definitely not. But I do feel like it... Uh, let's, let's, hold on, I'm just gonna figure out what I want to play here. Uh, let's do, let's do Eliminator. Uh, but I feel like it probably, like, set, uh, the standard a little bit differently for Motorstorm. I, I don't know, like, what I'm trying to say. But you know what I mean? Like, it's, where do you go from here? They kind of, like, jump the shark with this one. Like the only only thing I could really see them doing is trying to like add in different vehicles, kind of like the crew does. And have like boat racing and stuff, but at that point, it's not really Motorstorm anymore. So I don't know. But I would love to see them try and revive this series because it is a shame that this series died on the PS3. Because I still think of like the PS3 being very recent, and then I find out the PS4 has been out for six years. I'm like, okay. I've barely ever used the PS4 for that matter. 
So I'm sure, like, in five years, I'm gonna be like, you know what? Let's start going through some PS4 games that never came out on PC. I'm gonna start playing through those just like I did with the P uh, PS3 games. So I'm sure I'll be able to find a ton of them. So I'm just setting this like four player races. I gotta kinda like put more people up here. Uh, unless I can't. I wonder why default's to four. I noticed that last race too. A motorstorm gets really hectic. With a lot, a lot of people on track. So yes, I do gotta fix that. Quite badly, actually. Or else this is gonna be like the shortest race. That's okay, because now I'm remembering, I don't really like this track a ton. So that's okay. But let's remedy some of these problems, so just do another basic race. Uh, let's go to whenever it loads. Any day. Oh, now we got the loading screen. We had to load the loading screen first. Motorstorm has never really had good loading times. It never has. I remember the first Motorstorm being, like, especially brutal. Mile High Club's really cool. Let's do that. In a truck. Uh, mode. Race. Laps to AI opponents. How many can I bump it up to? 15? Excellent. I do want to have it on Rookie, though. I should be bumping it up. But you know what? If I keep it on Rookie and I make no mention of it this entire video, no one's going to notice. Besides maybe everybody. And I can just play it off like I'm a literal motor storm god right now. So, what difficulty? No, I'm, I'm, I'm playing normal. <laughs> This track's, um, this track's interesting, because this track that we're going on takes place pretty much inside a skyscraper. We're jumping out of windows on top of buildings, and we're just racing through buildings, like, 100 stories up. If this is the track, I think it is. 100% is. Let's do it. This is the most storm I know and love now. <laughs> oh my god. What a difference, you know, just quintupling, not quintupling, but quadrupling the amount of enemies or opponents you have makes. Yeah, this track's sort of tricky if memory serves correctly. Okay, let's not blow up. A little bit too much boost. In Motorstorm, if you use too much boost, you uh, you kind of blow up. But you also regain your, uh, or like, uh, your motor itself cools down really quick, especially depending on the weather conditions of the map. So if you're going through water or if it's raining, uh, that tends to cool off your engine a little bit quicker. There's also a strategy to maybe using a little bit more boost, especially as you're about to go in the water and stuff. Which is pretty nifty, but that doesn't really pop up too much in this one. Like, it does. But nowhere near as much as Pacific Rift, which was all based around weather and just different situations. Like, if you go through fire, your card's gonna blow up, like, in half a second if you try and boost through it. But again, it's not, it's not as much of a focal point in this one as it was Pacific Rift. But it is there. Like, me those mechanics still remain. And I'm pretty sure those mechanics were also in the original Motor Storm, but it's been so long since I played the original Motor Storm, which is why I kind of want to do a video on it. I just remember playing the original Motor Storm in high school, um, maybe like a year after it came out. I had to play it like in 07 or 08, because um, I got it with Metal Gear Solid 4. That's what got me my, PS4, uh, my PS3 at the time. Um, and I just remember chilling out on Motor Storm for a while. And I made the only song on the set list that could play uh, Nirvana's Buried. 
because in high school, uh, from, you know, the mid-90s until now, uh, everyone always has that, or at least a few people always have that Nirvana phase. And I was definitely pretty much only listening to Nirvana for a couple of months. And when I saw Breed, I was like, yep, this is my song. And I never got sick of it either. And I had hours upon hours of Nirvana uh, Breed logged into MotorStorm. Wait, what? I don't know why it just reset me to track and that just like kind of threw me off. Oh well. That's a cool little stage. Should I do a chase? I don't know if I like chase mode. I'm gonna do it, but I can't. I don't really know if I like it. We're gonna do it. Just feature everything. Why not? Good track. Suburban shakedown. Let's do that. Change vehicle. Um. Why not just do a monster truck? Why not? Let's just go really stupid. Chase. AI difficulty. Let's bump that up to pro. Give this a go. It's a shame the servers for all the MotorStorm games are down. It's a shame for like a shame that like a lot of the PS3 game servers are completely down now. Because I would love to play so many PS3 games online. And like admittedly, like a few of them I can do through Excellent Kai. I don't think I could do it with a uh, motor storm though. I don't think there's a. Uh... Yeah, no, I don't think there's like actual like land support in motor storm, like there is like with Warhawk and stuff, to make that feasible. But yeah, whatever. Maybe one day a new one will get made. Maybe. Probably not though. But you never know. I mean, we live in 2019 where a new Half-Life just got announced. In VR, which is actually a nice segue to this game, because this game was actually one that was used to really uh, push that PS, like, 3D TV. That, you know, they really pushed for, like, a year. Which was, like, a $200, like, I think it was a 720p TV. That 3D support, and you got, like, uh, glasses for it. And they did, like, the simul view thing, which meant if you wanted to do split screen, if uh, both players put on glasses, the shutter speed would uh, shutter speeds be in such a way where it looked like you had a full screen to yourself, when in reality the screen itself was swapping image so fast, and the glasses were also perfectly in sync with it, so you'd only see your perspective through the glasses. I think that was, like, the worst way to ever explain it, but it was basically a way... Uh, to do split screen, uh, split screen games without the screen looking split through the power of a 3D TV. And Sony really, really liked their, uh, their PS 3D TV. Admittedly, I wanted one for a while, and I heard it was, like, actually alright. It wasn't, like, like, that super expensive either. Cool. Oh, this is multi-round. Okay. I didn't realize this is multi-round for some reason. I thought I just won really, really fast. But yeah, it's kind of like what Sony was pushing at the time this released. And to be honest, like, for couch co-op stuff and whatnot, like, that was such a good idea, and I kind of wish 3D TV sort of survived within gaming just for that. And I've always found it to be a bit of a shame that, like, um, like, local multiplayer just sort of, it's not that it's gone, it's not extinct by any means, but, you know, it's not as much of a focus anymore. And I kind of get it, too. Because, like, consoles these days already kind of sort of struggle to run games. 
Is that even kind of sort of they they do? So trying to render, you know, two instances of the game at once in split screen? Pretty difficult. But man, I wish there was like more local stuff on PC and whatnot. And I wish that 3D technology took off more. Just so everyone could have like their own screen on one monitor, just wearing the glasses. Be nice. Like, wouldn't it be ideal, wouldn't it be perfect, but it would be nice. But that's just me. Can we get another round? So, oh, score to win is 20. Alright, so if I get first place two more rounds, I won. Okay. Got it. Easy enough. This may also just kind of be the last race I do for the video as well. Because I feel like I touched upon everything I wanted to touch upon. This uh, Motor Storm Apocalypse is really, really fun. And I have no regrets sort of paying whatever I paid to get it. But then again, like, you put pretty much any racing game in front of me, I'm going to usually have a good time. A racing game has to be very, very bad for me not to find some enjoyment out of it. It pretty much has to be abysmal. Or very dated. Like, I did a video on a very dated racing game uh, the other day, Stunt Race FX for SNES. Like, that one's dated. Uh, I even said, like, I probably wouldn't really play it anymore. But, like, even that one, I found, like, a lot of stuff to like in it. Now I'm just trying to think of racing games I don't enjoy. And the only one that came to mind that I tried to seriously play was, I think, called World Truck Racing? Or World Truck Championship? It was on Steam. It was awful. That's the only one that comes to mind. Most racing games I always find, like, a lot of enjoyment in. And MotorStorm is up there with the best of them. Besides MotorStorm RC. Wait, what game? Maybe I will do a video on that one, though, because that one's, like, a... That one would actually be, like, a fairly negative video, I think. Just because it took what... Is so good about MotorStorm, and just kind of like took a piss on it. And I don't know why they thought it was a good idea. Like if they made it like Revolt or something, like I feel like that would have worked pretty well. Revolt would have worked really, really well. If they wanted to go that route, but like a top-down, or not top-down, but like an isometric racing game based on the MotorStorm license, like why, why? That's just such an odd choice. But if it was just like off-road RC cars, like with a view like this, and get a gameplay very similar to this, but they kind of made like all the tracks, like a child's playground kind of, like that, that would work, that would be good. That would be very enjoyable. It's not like Sony's incapable of it. They did it with uh, Twisted Metal, actually, and that worked out pretty okay. There we go. Hey, earned a trophy. Probably for winning one of everything in, like, quick play, if I had to guess. That sounds about right. We have some MotorStorm Apocalypse. It's still at its very core MotorStorm. All the core gameplay is there. All the core feel is there. Um, the track design definitely feels like it. With some of the branching paths and like the, uh, the vehicle variety. But it just had that really cool twist of being in that Apocalypse setting with the maps that kind of transform over time. Not all of them, but some of them. 
if I if I'm correct, I think like on the track selection, the ones that have the little uh, warning sign have the transforming elements. Yeah, because you can turn it on and off incidents. So, yeah, like you have the transforming elements and all that, and it's, it was really cool. Um, you can actually make modes. I never really looked at this. Was there, like, anything, like, special about this? Let me see. How do I do this? Settings. Oh! Different... Okay. Oh, crap. You can, like, actually edit a lot with these. Okay. So you got like some like good customization in that. Weekly challenges like those are definitely go uh, definitely done. But yeah, Motorstorm Apocalypse, great game. Um, if you want to, like get like a nice like racing game with the story, the campaign itself takes about six hours. If you want to just do everything there really is to do in it, um, I'd probably estimate like 10 hours to like kind of do everything single player that you might want to see, which I know isn't a ton of time, but you know what? For me, it was perfect. Um, I'm sure you could actually get like probably closer to 20 or 30 if you want to unlock literally everything and try and do every mode on every single map with instance without instance, like if you want to do everything, probably take, you know, around like 20, 30 hours, but... If you just want to do the campaign and just mess around like in the quick play, yeah, you get like a good amount of fun out of it. Like you know, like a, you know, like like a two three afternoons out of it. But yeah, Motorstorm Apocalypse, really cool game. Try a lot of unique stuff. I love Motorstorm. Wish it would come back, but uh, if this is the final major, uh, major Motorstorm to come out, you know what? It went out with a bang. Motorstorm RC never happened. Toodles.